Yes, hello, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, webinar here where we're talking a little bit about integration between uh, CASSO and Indy and NGINX. Uh, specifically, we're going to really talk about three different things. Uh, you're going to have uh, uh, myself talking about different options for an application integration. Uh, Liam Crilly from uh, NGINX Product Management is on to talk a little bit about an introduction to NGINX. And uh, Tommy Cheng is going to talk more about the integration. Uh, and this is something for those of you that were not at uh, CA World, we were demonstrating uh, at CA World as well. And of course, we'll leave some time for uh, questions and answers at the end. Uh, CA Single Sign-On, uh, our goal has been for the last several releases to be as flexible as we can. I think most people understand uh, CA Single Sign-On works with agents. Uh, and agents plug into web servers. We also are, operate on a proxy model using our CA SSO Access Gateway, uh, formerly the Secure Proxy Server. And of course, there's open standard support as well as REST APIs to allow applications to query in for authentication and authorization. As part of that flexibility, in 12.7, we added OpenID Connect support. And OpenID Connects uh, is, you know, probably the most common open standard that's out there uh, from an identity single sign-on, uh, or certainly is growing. Uh, and uh, we've uh, tested that with Apache. There's plugins for Apache. We've tested that with Nginx as well. And other applications, this 12.7 implementation was certified by the OpenID uh, uh, standards body as well. And really, the, the goal has been to, add, to make sure we manage the, this flexibility. Uh, so everybody is familiar with agent-based. If you've been working with sing, single sign-on for a while, uh, the agents sit on each web server. There's a tight integration with the web server. It's really a last-mile security. Uh, but also those web server plugins have to be maintained and upgraded. The gateway approach, so rather to avoid having to put agents on every single web server, people use the gateway approach. It runs as a proxy server in front of the web applications. Traffic is routed through the gateway, which has an agent built in, and then the traffic can be routed elsewhere. But more and more what we're seeing is a drive towards an agentless single sign-on approach. Uh, that's really sort of the industry trend is to move more and more toward uh, trying to do open standards without having to deploy agents. And that is the approach that we've really taken for the NGINX integration that we're going to show here. Uh, the integration is built upon using OpenID Connect. Uh, it's using then the native security inside of NGINX once NGINX understands uh, the OpenID Connect token. And with doing that, there is nothing that you have to install from CA actually on the server. Uh, uh, and the nice part is there's nothing slowing down the NGINX platform either. Uh, the, now, for those people that still want to use more of a traditional approach for single sign-on, uh, we certainly can put this single sign-on gateway in front of the site, in, in front of an NGINX server. And also we can go in, there is a plug-in from a third party uh, for NGINX Plus, uh, a partner, a joint partner of ours, uh, IDF Connect, that has developed a more agent-like integration as well. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Liam uh, from NGINX. Liam's one of the NGINX product managers, and he's going to walk us through a little bit around what NGINX is. Liam? Thanks, Aaron. And uh, hey, everyone, good to be speaking with you today. So yes, my name is Liam Crilly. I'm Director of Product Management at NGINX, and uh, I'll give you a little bit of a background, history, uh, and uh, how uh, We've developed functionality that allows NGINX Plus to be used uh, in tight collaboration with CA Single Sign-On, uh, following that open standards approach that Aaron, Aaron just mentioned. So NGINX originated uh, way back around about 2001, so early 2000s, and it was it was one guy, Igor Sisoyev, who was working as a systems administrator at the time for a, a Russian company called Rambler at RU. Uh, and this is kind of the equivalent of Yahoo back in the, you know, the early 2000s. And he was managing a number of Apache servers, and he had the, he had the increase in growth of internet traffic at that time uh, was leading to instability on those servers. And with that, he set out to, to solve that problem, and NGINX was 
the result. As, as part of this, he was looking at solving uh, an industry challenge at the time, which was known as the C10K problem, C10K challenge. And that was to find a way of supporting 10,000 concurrent connections on a single server. So uh, that's, uh, that's what he got out to, to achieve, uh, and he developed a, a new kind of architecture, an event-based architecture to, to build Nginx. And today, uh, we, have, we have a very successful product. It uh, went open source in 2004. Nginx uh, was then founded by Igor and a number of co-founders in 2011. Uh, and then we set out to build an enterprise offering on top of uh, the successful open source project. Uh, and the first version of that was released 2013. So we have uh, offices around the world. We're headquartered out of San Francisco. I'm talking to you today from our Cambridge office in the UK. We have our headquarters in Cork, Core Engineering, uh, still largely based in Moscow, and uh, we have a Singapore office as well. Our open source project is powering over 300 million websites across the internet, and we have uh, over 1,200 commercial customers of our enterprise product, Nginx Plus. And when we look at that open source project and Nginx as a, a high-performance web server and reverse proxy, Nginx is really the, the number one choice for the busiest sites on the internet. And in fact, the busier the site, the more likely it is to be running Nginx. So if we look at the top 1 million sites, uh, you know, either based on uh, W3Techs or based on uh, the Alexa top million websites, uh, we're the number one, uh, recently surpassing uh, Apache for market share with 43% of the websites in that space. But as you look at the even busier sites, the top 100,000, top 10,000, uh, we are you know, far more likely to be used in these uh, types of environments. And by uh, the more uh, innovative, high performance, high scale uh, offerings. Now, uh, that's not to say that Nginx is only relevant to these uh, yeah, super high-scale sites. When you look at application infrastructures such as uh, Docker, the containerized applications and environments, that inherent efficiency, low resource utilization, low memory utilization, all benefit from our event-driven architecture and makes Nginx a, a very popular, successful, high-performance option for deploying in containers. Uh, and you know, this, this shows that with uh, all of the images on Docker Hub, Nginx uh, has for you know, well over two years been you know, the number one image in terms of stars, in terms of pool. Uh, because we're such a natural fit, not only with high-performance web servers on hardware, but also with high-performance microservice application environments based on containerized technology. And so on the back of the success of the open source project for Nginx, we developed Nginx Plus. This is our uh, enterprise offering. It's a fully supported commercial version of Nginx. And beyond that, it comes with a number of additional functionality based or on enterprise use cases. So you have uh, Nginx Plus as an application server where we're running application code uh, through file CGI, through PHP FPM, and other uh, application uh, protocols. Nginx as a content cache is widely used by many of the leading global CDN providers as their caching engine of choice. Uh, and that use case extends also to microcaching use cases for web applications, uh, even for APIs and regular web apps, or web websites. Nginx Plus comes with an additional API for managing uh, the caching functionality uh, with respect to cache purge control. But perhaps the primary use case for Nginx Plus uh, Enterprise product is as an application delivery controller or as a load balancer. And uh, we've seen lots of adoption of Nginx Plus from 
organizations looking to move away from a hardware-based ADC, application driven controller, uh, to a software load balancer. And NGX Plus has been uh, you know, most recently sort of recognized by Gartner, being positioned on the uh, Magic Quadrant for ADCs as the, the first software load balancer of its type to, to get that recognition. Monitoring and management with NGX Plus uh, provides some additional UI around uh, a dashboard and a lot of runtime metrics that are exposed through that dashboard and through uh, an API for external monitoring purposes. And NGX Plus is also available with a web application firewall. So you can have that secure front end reverse proxy looking after the security constraints around uh, TLS termination, authentication, as we'll go on to, uh, and of course, web application firewall as well. So I mentioned Gartner already, in the interest of, of time, I'll, I'll move beyond this, but we, yeah, we are seeing lots of interest from this software-only approach to load balancing. And as organizations move uh, to a more adaptive, sort of, as Gartner calls it, mode two IT operations, uh, NGINX and other sort of open source platforms are gaining lots of popularity. And to that end, uh, we score the highest around those mode two application developments uh, for a load balancer in that space. So moving on to NGINX Plus and the single sign-on, uh, NGINX Plus also includes capabilities to validate JSON web tokens, which brings us support for OpenID Connect. Now, this means that we can simplify application logic by offloading the authentication, the single sign-on uh, to a single front-end reverse proxy. We can then scale out that application so there can be multiple applications behind a single front end, all of which can participate in a single sign-on environment without having to modify the backend application at all. And then we can provide advanced use cases, such as rate limiting by the user ID, as opposed to rate limiting by IP address or some other sort of crude approximation for a user. The fact that NGINX Plus can validate and look into the token to find the, the attributes of a user mean that we can provide centralized logging capabilities as well as uh, richer authentication and even access control at the reverse proxy at the gateway uh, without having to burden the identity provider on each and every request, which leads to a, a much faster and overall high performance application environment. So, uh, before I hand back uh, to Tommy for, for the demo, I'll just point out that if you're not an NGX Plus customer today, uh, please visit NGX.com and sign up for a, a free trial. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to, to reproduce what Tommy will show you and uh, yeah, see how NGX Plus can, can help you in other ways as well. So, uh, with that, uh, I'll leave these resources here for, for posterity, so they're in the in the deck. And uh, I'll head over to Tommy. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, hopefully, you can all hear me. Uh, with that, now I am going to switch uh, the screen to my desktop. Uh, okay. And I think uh, the first important thing to keep in mind is uh, the Open Open uh, OpenID Connect is right now is still under heavy development. Uh, so you know thing will still uh, change, and uh, so very quickly. Today we will be focusing on uh, CH Ingo Channel 12.7. Uh, here I am putting up a validate that's here that come is to invite uh, those who have the interest or those who have the need. So
to look into our 12.8 version. Uh, by the time 12.8 version come out, there will be more improvements, more capabilities, and surrounding the OpenID Connect. Uh, so very quickly, uh, I want to point some of the things for you to study. Uh, just in case the OpenID Connect is new to you. So OpenID Connect right now is so, so it's called OpenID Connect 1.0. Uh, it's a standard controlled by OpenID Foundation. It is built on top of OR 2.0. On the screen, I highlighted uh, OR 2.0 uh, standard come out October 2012. Uh, the previous version was 2010, April. So you can imagine the whole thing has progressed so quickly. Within 18 months, and the original version uh, become obsolete. And OpenID uh, Connect 1.0 is built on OR 2.0. And so here we are. Uh, I want to start, uh, I guess, uh, getting help the industry to formalize the terminology a bit more. Uh, for some of us, we are doing federated part of the single sign-on for some time now. We know in the uh, federated single sign-on, they have been various terminology. Uh, we heard of identity provider, uh, you know, service provider, uh, that kind of terminology. With OpenID, it seems to me the industry is, is not in import uh, using the OpenID provider or OP and the reliant party for the consuming side. So uh, as I pointed out earlier, 12.7 uh, uh, is the current year product. With 12.7, uh, we are a, a certified uh, basic OP. With 12.8, we are now working on to become an RP. And so for my personal opinion, over time, the Open Energy Connect may be replacing SEMO2, which is, which is, 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 is prime today uh, in the uh, federal single sign-up. Uh, but Open, Open, Open Energy Connect is addressing not just federal part. Uh, not just web single sign on, but also other type of mobile device and other type of, you know, maybe the so-called single page app. Uh, so by that time, SEMO2 will be a bit heavy. And uh, so with, with enterprise, people tend want to simplify things. And we all know uh, this is not 10 years or 20 years ago where uh, when uh, people were focusing on how to support, you know, a very complicated enterprise implementation. People now want, want simplification. So that's personally how I feel about Open ID Connect and how you, you may have the chance to replace them or two in the future, okay? So I don't want to spend too much time. Uh, so. First, I want to quickly show you uh, the the uh, 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 you know a number of demos. Uh, each one is attempting to show you the how the Engine X Plus uh, OpenID Connect would work. Just like you know when you are learning, step one you say okay you know if I click on a basic protection, when I click on it. You know, you are going to get a 401 authorization required because we do not have a JWT token open, uh, that particular authentication module need. So that's just that. You know, you are going to see a 401 authorization required. And uh, you are going to see more information on the web. Uh, the the Internet Plus basic or JWT protection it's actually just support authorization header, query string, and cookies. And these are, in a way, the state of the art for HTTP protocol. These are, will be the three ways you can help 
uh, from the standard point of view, to allow a middleware, you know, where middle, middleware to help you protect a website. And today we will be focusing on the cookie part. Okay. You know, again, there are more uh, online documentation you can find. Uh, you can just go to Google and you, you will see more resources. So, so the first one we saw was when you do not have any kind of identity, you are being prompted with a 401 error. And uh, so the next step is now what do we do? So here I have a a, a, a this login form. So you need on this page my purpose is to show you, uh, you know, again, you know why you care about it. Uh, OAuth 2.0 I mentioned earlier why you care about OpenID Connect 1.0 because you need some I guess knowledge uh, on those particular two things so that you 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 understand how you work just like you understand how SAML 2 work or even longer the SAML 1 work. So so with OpenID Connect, you need to understand there's an idea called client ID. There's a concept called scope. There's a, UI, a service URL called authorization endpoint. There's another token URL. Uh, that's the next token URL. Uh, so, so here is a simple application. What I did, what I did was I, I presented this form, and uh, if you go to your uh, provider, OpenID uh, provider, then you you will be able to find information like this in order to enter them here, and then you can do a login. So when you do a login, it will cause a it, it's going to send you over to to CA single sign on, uh, and and where you have you know a, a, a standard web agent, because in this case you know CA single sign on is the provider, and being a provider, you still have the responsibility to to authenticate the end user. So what I'm going to do is use my my uh, CA world uh, you know system. So I can just log in using the same installation. So again, this will be a your standard CS single sign on login form. Oops. Okay, I guess I didn't have the password correct. Okay, so once you have a login, then you are going to see you know. Part of the uh, OpenID Connect is you need to allow the user to say, yes, I will be willing to, to allow my information to be sent over to someone else. Uh, and so he, in this part, we are using a scope called email. And then again, you know, all those intermediate status change it just a mean to I guess to make the demo a bit more interesting. You are seeing things things are flowing through the, uh, 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 among the whole thing, and in the end we arrive, you know, at a website that is protected under the uh, Engine X Plus uh, authentication scheme. So if I go come back to this for one error, if I do a refresh, then you can see now because I have a I have a cookie there. I have a uh, JWT cookie, so the the actor now becomes successful. So now if we come back to our login form. On the login form, I actually you know uh, had a small script that would capture the cookie and display the content of the cookie. And that that cookie is the JWT uh, token. JWT token, you have the header part where we have a KSD, we have the signature algorithm, and then we have the payload. You can see the subject of the J Green. That's the ID I logged in earlier. There are other information, and in the end, you are going to see, for example, in this case, we have the email. Okay. Now here, if I do a log off. And the logout is very simple. It simply removes the cookie from the browser. And therefore, if I come back to the two, two pages I had earlier, uh, what did I put? Okay. 
And I, I do a refresh, then we have seen that full one header again. Okay. Now, so again, you know, the step one is you see, you just protect it and uh, to see how do you log in. And then, you know, we now have another one called assistant login when it's not, when you do not have login yet. So you can see right now I am arriving at different destination. Uh, and this particular destination is configured so that if you do not have a section, instead of giving you a 401, it bring you to the login phone automatically. It set the target, it set the target uh, correctly as well. So likewise, uh, you know, earlier we were at the IDP, the IDP session is still valid, and therefore I don't need to, you know, provide a credential the second time, and we are now arriving at a, a different page. So again, if you go back to the login form, and you can see the cookies are now there again. Okay, so I just want to log it off so that it will flow better with my demo. The next one uh, then become a fully fully automated. Okay, so later on I'm going to show you how you configure all these things. Right now, I just want to quickly show you when it works. You know, instead of and this time you are going to see. The profile is different. You know, again, this is another reason why you, you need to have some level of understanding about OpenID Connect. So here, our, open pro, our, our, our profile, or our, our uh, OpenID Connect scope, is going to deliver email, last name, and first name. And then here we are on this page. And on this page, uh, I have a a proxy version, so so you so you can click on all the headers. You can see my last name can be delivered using the HTTP header, first name and email, and certainly I'm preserving the host name as well. And this particular thing is a JSP page that is hosted on a uh, Java application server, a Tomcat actually, and you can see on the cookie. We have this all underscore CS so cookie, and this will be your JWT uh, token. It's a base 64 encoded. Uh, for the login page we, we saw earlier, we decode it so that it makes better sense for you. But this is its whole content. And you can also see that because this is the agent list, so we really do not have a similar session cookie at all. Okay, but then again, you can use some of the facility you are familiar with some either where you can deliver information in an HTTP header. So now I also have a logout page, and you simply say now I'm logging it out and bring it back to the home page. Okay, so the next step will be we are going to look at you know how we do the configuration, how we did the configuration, and the, some of the tools. I created for this particular demo. So currently, we start with the uh, CA single sign admin UI. Uh, the particular version you are looking at is 12.7. Uh, if you participate in 12.8 beta, uh, you you are going to see some similar thing. Uh, again, we are still enhancing it. So right now, what I'm showing you is the GA version. With 12.8, you'll be uh, a bit different. Uh, because of, uh, of new functionality we are providing. So taking me myself some hint, we are, we are going to look at the authorization provided. We are going to look at OpenID Connect client. Uh, we can look at a, little, a little bit about the authentication uh, requirement. Uh, but that's actually optional. Uh, earlier I mentioned it to you, you know, being the provider, you still have the Responsibilities to authenticate the user server. And so for the uh, GA single sign customer, you probably all know very well how you configure uh, those kind of things. So starting with authorized and provider, uh, let's see, now we are going to look at the last one, OP3. Again, looking at this, it's just to to 
you know, give the friend here who have not actually uh, tried our OpenID command some idea uh, how a, uh, an auto browser station provider is, is configured and, and how we did it for this particular demo. So while it's coming up, uh, almost there. So again, we have a user directory, the regular thing. You know, you need to have a user directory in order to provide the so-called client, the OpenID, uh, uh, the JWD client from your user store. Uh, we have certain things, for example, the authentication. So this authentication URL is a, uh, you know, it's going to, to enforce that authentication requirement. Then we pick a certificate. We select the signing algorithm. You know, again, all these things are open ID, uh, you know, connect requirements. And then we do our mapping. So we say, you know, my email is stored in the mail attribute. My first name is in the given name. My last name is in the SN, and these are uh, uh, standard LDAP attribute names. And so we have two different scopes. You know, if a client is only given the email scope, then they can only see email. For profile uh, scope, then you can see the three of them, as we saw earlier, the email, last name, and first name. I'm closing this one, we'll go back to the client. So on the client side here, you can see I have a, a number of them. On my naming convention is I have the OP on the front. Uh, the consumer side, or the reliant party on the next. So I can need to detail which one I need to look at. And again, it's, uh, it's, a, it's just a, a naming convention. Here we, we, you know, selected our OP3 as a provider. When you have it selected, then you have the scopes that are available to you, uh, you know, from administration point of view. Uh, again, this is the 12.7. This screen would change a bit by the time it's 12.8. Uh, with 12.7, we are basic OP uh, certified. So we support the authorization code flow. And we allow you to send the user information in the ID token. Now, because of that, then we know uh, once we get the, the ID token, we do not need to go back to retrieve something like, you know, first name and last name uh, in, 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 in the scope. And we, we now have the, uh, we need to also configure with the red URI. With the right UI wise, you can see there are two of them. Uh, one of them is when I, what I used when I was uh, doing a CEO world demo. And this time I purposely to change the name so that you actually see uh, there are different domain names. And therefore, it, it's still more obvious it's a, a, a federated English I am now. You know, as opposed to you are within the same, the same unlocking domain. So that can be very different. And then, then again, there are other things. And again, all these things are open ID connect related information. So I'm not going to spend my time right now just to give you some idea, uh, you know, how you, you would configure the C, uh, the CA single sign on uh, open ID authorization provider and points. Okay. Now we can now look at, uh, how we make it possible to support the four different demo. The first one uh, is very simple. Uh, again, this will be the, you know, how you configure your uh, Engine X Plus. So earlier we look at the, the provider side, now we are looking at the reply party side. So this is a very simple uh, configuration, as you can imagine. You know, you specify where you your, 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 your uh, document may, may be located. The virtual directory be here single SSO. Uh, you have a realm name, and then you are specifying a cookie name. In this particular fashion, you know, again, don't, 
so asking why it's named in such a way, but it is it is what it is. Uh, and then, you know, important part is we do need to have a key file. Uh, a security token needs to have a way to ensure its integrity. So in this case, we open a uh, standard. So this URL I copy from uh, where we had it earlier uh, when we were looking at the client. And so, so you know, uh, it is on a uh, the provider server. When you click at it, it's going to show you a CWK file. And so what you need to do is take this content and then store it in this location. Certainly you can name the file name however way you want. Uh, but you do need to pick the uh, DWK file from the uh, CA single sign on server. Uh, again, this is a standard uh, file. Within this file, you have public key. So here is a very funny, interesting thing. All this thing represents the public key. And the public key will be used by, uh, by uh, Internet Plus to verify your signature, and therefore you know this particular to that, that particular token is valid. And uh, it also has a expiration time. Right now I configure it to be 15 minutes, and therefore what it means is your session will remain valid for 15 minutes. 15 minutes later, the, the interception or the configuration would then uh, will then restart the whole single sign process. And therefore, you know, for those of you who have more experience with uh, CA single sign on, then you know you may want to configure, configure your provider in active timeout to, to somehow match up with the uh, expiration time of, the, of your data duty uh, token. So that's, so that's the, uh, the one we saw was the simple one. Now the next step will be, you know, for Internet Plus, uh, the tool has the capability to allow you to intercept the 401 error. So when you detect 401 error, you can say, oh, okay, instead of uh, just, you know, uh, complain about 401 error, you can say, you know, why don't we send the user somewhere else? So this was my second assisted uh, single sign demo. You know, where we say, oh, go to uh, this particular uh, URL, and you are going to supply the original request URI, and therefore uh, that particular login application will take over, and you will then replace the request URI in that target field. So you can see we are setting variables. We are using real tools to redirect. And you can see uh, this facility are also much, you know, simple. There's no uh, complex uh, programming, rather just a, a simple configuration. And then the next one is a, a sort of a full blown where we saw the whole, the whole automatic login, uh, single sign now. So in this case, what we are seeing is again, everything before are quite similar. Our login form redirect is now a bit more complex. We say you, you need to go to an authentication endpoint. You are going to supply your client ID. You are going to supply your Open ID profile. You are going to supply your AURL, URL, your uh, uh, code to token URL, and then we even specify a cookie name. So you can imagine if you are going to create yet another application then this becomes your template. This will be a template. Instead of login four, you probably call login five or, or whatever name in that, that makes sense to you. Not only that, uh, here is the set header uh, configuration. You, you, you know, we saw the result earlier. You can set a header, you can set a host header, you can set a header from the uh, data view client. So this is how it was configured. And here is a proxy. So on the proxy, you see I'm forwarding the, the request to my backend on, through localhost. The particular uh, application server using the port 68 go into application hello world, and it actually display the, the header page we saw earlier. 
okay? Then deployment. So for, in order to get some of the things done, uh, I, I think very quickly, uh, I, I just want to talk about, uh, earlier on, on the screen you probably saw, you know, openid.jsv, I think, uh, it, you know, to, 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 I guess, ensure the integrity of the CA uh, implementation, and I will probably call it, uh, we'll probably call it, you know, ORDC.JSP. Uh, there's a single modification, really. I mean, nothing major. It's just a, a, a query parameter need to be adjusted. Now, the more important part is really the uh, redirect URI and files. In fact, it would mean here I'm going to show you only a partial script uh, to, to, I guess, to highlight the point. With OpenID Connect, you need to have a, a concept called redirect URI. And this redirect URI serves, you know, for security purpose. It serves as an authorized and a callback URI. Okay. Uh, the particular thing, uh, the application is JavaScript based. There's no server side script like PHP or PHP at all. It's, the whole thing is a JavaScript. Uh, and then, you know, we need to deploy it on the NNX Plus so that it has ability to create cookie to be consumed by NNX Plus itself. And so this uh, so-called authorization code flow uh, had three phases. The first one is here, uh, you know, when you, when the browser come to this page originally, we will say you don't have anything I need, and therefore I'm sending you over to the uh, OP to be authenticated. Okay. After that, the OP is going to go through, it's going to, to send the browser a uh, redirect. And that redirect will give us the phase two. We are going to receive a code, an access code. And that access code, you know, needs to be further uh, translated into an ID token. So it's a code to token uh, call. And then once we have the ID token, then we are consuming, and then then on the landing page. So here is a, simple, a very simple, you know, high level uh, steps. So you know uh, how the whole thing is to flow. I think I forgot about one particular page. Uh, what I want to show you is also a flow. So on this page, what I'm going to show you is uh, the swing blend uh, between the four different part, uh, the, you know, five different components. So we have the user, you know, who come to a browser. Uh, it need to, it, it, it will be some, somehow sent to the single time OP. To, uh, to do an authorization request. And again, this authorization request is part of OpenID Connect or OAuth or 2.0 terminology. The single sign would then, uh, CA single sign would then ask the user to be authenticated. Uh, the user would then provide credential and also the consent to, to allow the information to be passed to a third party. And so the OP then give back and, uh, a code, and that code is where we say you have the code to token. Uh, and and send a code back using a code to request an ID token. And then the token will be, you know, sent back. The ID token will then be stored as a cookie. And this is the reason why that code, that piece of code needs to be uh, deployed on the open ID uh, connect uh, the, the, the engine X plus uh, web server, so that you know for security reason you will be allowed to create cookies uh, and within that particular domain. Then the user will then go to the uh, engine X plus again to re try to access the particular web page, and then you will validate the TWD token in a cookie, and then the information will then now be proxied to the the backend web application. The web application now will then provide you the web resources. So this is, a, a, I guess, the swing lane uh, for this auto legend code flow. You know, again, there are there are other type of uh, of flow. Uh, here we are focusing on uh, you know what is been, has been certified the auto legend code flow. 
Okay, so so earlier while I was talking about the uh, the uh, authentication code flow application. Uh, so again, this is, is that application. It's a Java-based application. You deploy it on the engine X first. Uh, and then we also have the code to token uh, a, sim a very simple application as well. It's a Java based. And why do we have this one? Uh, this one is to avoid or to stay from the course uh, configuration. A similar idea as you know why we need to have a JavaScript set on the engine H plus. We also have another script set on your uh SS gateway so that you do not need to configure the course at all. For some of those who are working with JavaScript over browser, a lot of times I guess it's quite uh it's it, it, it's quite uh I guess uh, noisy or, or or quite a bother, you know, when you have to deal with course. And Simply uh, have this uh, code to code to uh, token uh, installed or deployed on your uh, SS gateway. And if we look back to how I configured it, so that will be here. I have it deployed right underneath the gateway. Again, the naming convention is intended to make sure it's clear you know where that will be installed. Okay, so that will be the C2TH. Uh, that HTML, again, it will invoke some JavaScript. JavaScript is all included in the same application. And uh, then we also have, also have the login and local application, single app you, you have seen earlier. And so that's about uh, the demo. Hopefully I didn't take uh, too much of your time. Hey, thanks, Tommy. Uh, I pre we appreciate all that. Um, hopefully, people saw the value of the uh, nice open standard integration. There are a few questions, Tommy, that came in while you were talking. Uh, do you know if we can modify the audience field in the identity token uh, in the in the 12.7 release? The audience, uh, no. I guess in general, uh, for, from from certain specific, we also need to look at both the uh, provider side and the, the consumer side. So okay. in this case, right. what I'm saying is, is you know, if in, in Internet first doesn't support that particular, uh, you know, uh, the whatever parameter, then even if you can modify it, it wouldn't do you any good in practical yeah. manner. Yeah, well, I think in this case, they want to use the JOT token with multiple different partners, not just NGINX. But uh, it sounds like, it, yeah, it sounds like in 12.7, the audience field's not uh, modified. Uh, you can't modify that out of the box. Right, um, right. You know, again, it's all about your you consumer side. If your client program want to verify it, then you, you, you have to, you know, do more programming. Yeah. Now, another question that came in, Tommy, are do you know if there's ability to create a JOT token with a configurable parameters? Uh, so maybe not just the email address, but, uh, but other parameters as well? I believe you can. So, so already we saw the, the mapping screen. Uh, so that's what we do, do today. What we do today is that mapping screen uh, allow you to say, I'm mapping a claim name to an attribute name. And you can, you know, create as many as you want. Then you can then control it over your profile, uh, over your scope. And in, in, in this demo, I use the profile as a sample. You know, our prof my profile in this case include the email, the last name, and the first name. So that answer the question, or, or maybe okay. you are thinking something more fancy, you know, other than the SUV mapping. Yeah. Okay. And a question came around around uh, the the authorization code expirations. You showed us the configuration screen where that can time out. Was that configurable in seconds or by or just minutes? I, I believe it's by minute. Is it is by minute? Yes. 
we can go back to the screen. Uh, I forget that name. So go ahead. Uh, okay. Like, yeah. Uh, there's a question that says, is there an OpenID Connect feature roadmap for CASSO? Uh, it'd be nice to have an idea when additional OIDC capabilities will be available on the product. Uh, Herb, I'm not sure if you're still on, uh, but uh, to that one, there is certainly additional OpenID Connect features coming in the next release, the 12.8 release. Uh, right now, you know, her, uh, right now, I, it looks like we are adding, uh, the best thing to do is probably look at the validate.ca.com site. Uh, the, there is actually pre-release versions of, uh, of that are actually out there that have some additional functionality such as uh, uh, refresh tokens, uh, PKC support, and uh, some additional items there. Uh, I'm probably not making them all, identifying all of them. Uh, but, uh, you know, certainly uh, take, the best thing to do is take, take a look at the validate.ca.com site for to see what's being developed for the next release. Uh, the, apparently, the, uh, we are adding uh, also implicit flow, authentication enforcement uh, as well. So there are some additional, a lot of additional things coming in the next release around our additional OpenID Connect support. Um, let's see, what other questions do we have here? Um, I have a comment about the, uh, the time uh, for the uh, being uh, just in minutes being uh, a little bit too granular, uh, the request for seconds. Uh, the best recommendation I could say there is, is if you, you know, certainly feel that you should be that granular to a second, and I'm not going to disagree with it. Uh, the, the recommendation we go to our community site and create an idea. Uh, and uh, certainly, you know, that'll, that'll be heard. Uh, the uh, other than that, I'm trying to see other questions that are here in the uh, question pool. I don't see any that are unanswered. Um, so what I'll do is I'll say hopefully you sort of get an insight a little bit as to our, our integration, CASSO, do an OpenID Connect. Uh, the, a lot of value, as uh, Liam pointed out, with uh, doing OpenID Connect into Nginx and not requiring an extra module or plugin to be installed in, uh, in the server as well. So, uh, you know, hopefully here this has been informative. And uh, like uh, like I said, if there's any, if you want to see any additional things, uh, the validate.ca.com site is a great way to see what's coming in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you, Liam. Thank you, Tommy. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.